I went with Kahalati, how about Shem, how Shai? All praise to the Most High God. In the name of who the world ignorantly calls Jesus Christ. Double honors to all the elders of HOI across the country for putting their life on the line to teach us this word. Double honors to Elder Priest Zabak, Elder Priest Tara. This is Brother Yawasab from HOINY coming at you with Warrior Spirit Part 2. All right? And let's just get on into it. It's the book of 2 Samuel. Book of 2 Samuel, chapter 21, verse 19. And there was again a battle in Gob with the Philistines, where Elhanan, the son of Jaarig Oregon, a Bethlehemite, a Bethlehemite, slew the brother of Goliath, the Gittite, the staff of whose spear was like a weaver's beam. It's pretty big, you know what I'm saying? That's Goliath's brother, so you already know. Verse 20. And there was yet a battle in Gath, where was a man of great stature that had on every hand six fingers and on every foot six toes, four and twenty in number. He was also born to a giant, to the giant. And when he defied Israel, Jonathan, the son of Shemaiah, the brother of David, slew him. These four were born to the giant of Gath and fell by the hand of David and by the hand of his servants. So not only David was slaying giants like Goliath, but his nephew, his nephew Jonathan, also was slaying giants, right? They were also, they, they also slayed uh, Goliath's brother in the future. You dig what I'm talking about? So what we're talking about here now is warrior spirit. That type of spirit, to be facing somebody with a great stature who got six fingers and six toes, right? On each foot, though. You know what I'm talking about? That ain't no, that ain't no little task. We want to have a heart to face that. Where do we get that warrior spirit from? Where do we get that warrior spirit from? It all comes from the Most High God. Yahweh Hashem Yahweh Shai. But what we want to do, where's my pocket phone? What we want to do is we want to keep in mind that fasting, prayer, and he meditating on these scriptures is what's going to give us what we need in the time where we need that warrior spirit, all right? When we're tested, when we're tried, all right? So let's get on into the scriptures. How do we get that warrior spirit, all right? Let's say, let's start with 1 John, the book of 1 John, 1 John 4, 18. The book of 1 John, chapter 4, verse 18. There is no fear in love, but perfect love casteth out fear, because fear hath torment. He that feareth is not made in perfect love. You hear that? It says, there is no fear in love, right? What is love, right? Let's move forward. What is love? First John 5 and 3, you know what I mean? For this is the love of God, that we keep his commandments, and his commandments are not grievous, right? So how do you get rid of fear? You got to abide in love. How do you abide in love? You follow the commandments of the Most High God, right? That's where we get our strength from. That's where you get your confidence from. Otherwise, you don't know what's going to happen with you. You got to realize that if you, if you believe in the Most High God and you follow his commandments, it'll help your strength. It'll get rid of your fear so that you believe that he will be there for you. Let's get something to back that up. Let's get something to back that up. Let's go to Judith. Let's go to the book of Judith. Where's that at? Where's that at? The book of Judith, right? Judith chapter 8, matter of fact, Judith chapter 8, right? Judith chapter 8, all right? And this is where she's talking to the people. The people are, are weak and they don't believe that they can overcome the odds. And here comes Judith to let them know that you can overcome the odds, right? And let's start uh, Judith chapter 8, verse 17. Let's start there. Therefore, let us wait. Therefore, let us wait for the salvation of him. And call upon him to help us, and he will hear our voice if it please him. For there arose none in our age, neither is there any now in these days, neither tribe nor family nor people nor city among us, which worship gods made with hands, as hath been aforetime. So she's saying we worship the true God. We're not like these people who worship wood or we worship stone. You dig? We worship the Most High God, so we shouldn't fear. We do the right thing by him. He'll do the right thing by us, is what she's saying. For, for the which cause our fathers were given to the sword, and for a spoil, and had a great fall before our enemies. 
But we know that none, uh, none other God, therefore we trust that he will not despise us, nor any of our nation. You dig? And that's Judith right there. That's Judith right there, a mighty, mighty woman of Israel who's letting us know, hey, we worship, if you worship in God the right way, if you worship in God in truth and sincerity, you walking in the commandments that he laid out for you to the best of your ability, then that's where your confidence comes from. Just like 1 John 4.18 is talking about. That's where your confidence is going to come from, right? Let's, let's speak on confidence real quick. Let's, let's go to uh, 1 Samuel. 1 Samuel uh, 17, I believe, right? 1 Samuel 17, let's talk about David and Goliath, right? Because David and Goliath, obviously that's warrior spirit. Obviously that was a warrior's heart. Obviously we know King David was a mighty, mighty warrior for the most high, right? And uh, so let's start with this. Let's start with this. Verse uh, 44, and the Philistine said to David, come to me and I will give thy flesh unto the fowls of the air and the beasts of the field. Then said David to the Philistine. Thou comest to me with a sword and a spear and with a shield, but I come to thee in the name of the Lord of hosts and the God of the armies of Israel, whom thou hast defied. This day the Lord will deliver thee into mine hand, and I will smite thee and take thine head from thee, and I will give the carcasses of the host of the Philistines this day unto the fowls of the air and the wild beasts of the earth that all the earth may know that there is a God in Israel. You dig? That's that's warrior spirit right there. He called it before it happened. You dig what I'm talking about? Let me back this up real quick because before he before he went at the Philistine when he was talking to Saul, he said something that's that's real that's real strong. Let's go to um let's backtrack to 1 Samuel 17, verse 35. And uh no matter of fact, verse uh 36, 34, matter of fact, and David said unto Saul. Thy servant kept his father's sheep. And then came a lion and a bear and took a lamb out of the flock. And I went out after him and smote him and delivered it out of his mouth. And when he arose against me, I caught him by his beard, smote him and slew him. Right? The servant slew both the lion and the bear. And this uncircumcised Philistine will be as one of them, seeing he hath defied the armies of the living God. So what David is doing, what mighty, mighty King David is doing right there is he's drawing on his past experience, right? You are Israelite, you so-called blacks, Latinos, Native Americans. You got you to gotta use that when you're facing odds, when you're facing insurmountable odds, right? You got to look at your past. And what did the Most High do for you before? Did he ever get you out of a life or death situation? Did he ever pull you out of a situation where you could have been caught up? Did he ever get you out of a jam? And you know he did. So what you do is you draw on that. This same God that let me kill this bear and this lion is the same God that's gonna have me deal with this with this with this giant. You dig what I'm talking about? Let's let's prove that. Where's that at? That's in I believe that's Philippians. Philippians, Philippians 1 and 6. Being confident of this very thing, that he which hath begun a good work in you will perform it until the day of Hamashiach Yahweh. You understand? He began this work in you. You got to be confident that he's going to fulfill it. He began this work inside of you. You got to believe that it's not for nothing. You got to have, you got to go boldly and you got to say, I believe that this, that, that the most high got me. You dig what I'm talking about? Matter of fact, let me go. Let's do, let's, let's keep on on that real quick. Let's go to Hebrews. Let's go to the book of Hebrews chapter four, verse 16. Book of Hebrews chapter four, verse 16. Let us therefore come boldly into the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in the time of need, right? So when the most high, when the most high uh, helps you out, he wants you to come with confidence. He wants you to come boldly to the throne. He wants you to believe. He wants you to have the faith that comes from faith. And where does your faith come from? Your faith comes from following the most high. And, and keeping the commandments, that's where you see your strength come in. You see your strength come in because you are following the commandments to your best of your ability. You are walking in, in, in that faith. So that's, that's, that's what gives you the confidence. You know, our, our most high God is not going to leave you hanging. So anyway, back to uh, David and Goliath. So let's go back to uh, 1 Samuel chapter 17, verse 47, right? 
And all this assembly shall know that the Lord saveth not with sword and spear, but the battle is the Lord's and he will give you into our hands. So David knew it is not, it's not my muscle that's going to do it. It's not, it's not my pistol that's going to do it. It's the most high God going to do it. And, and that's where we put our faith in. We put our, of course, you know, ain't nothing wrong with getting your, get staying in shape and, and having a pistol and, you know, protecting your family that way. But ultimately, you know, pistols jam and there's always another man bigger than you. So you're really putting your faith in the most high above all things to get it done, right? Verse 48, and it came to pass when the Philistine arose and came and drew nigh to Dave to meet David, then David hasted and ran towards the army to meet the Philistine. We all know what happened from there, but David, it says David hasted and ran towards the Philistine. Right. He ran towards the Philistine army and, and Goliath. You dig? He didn't tiptoe. He wasn't scared. He didn't he didn't he didn't walk dramatically slowly. He hasted. He ran. To, he ran down there to meet the most high uh, to meet to meet uh, this army, the Philistines, because he knew the most high was with him. You dig what I'm talking about? He ran to meet that army. You feel me? And that's what I'm talking about. That's the warrior spirit. You feel what I'm talking about? Matter of fact, let's keep going. Let's keep going, because that was that's a beautiful scripture. But. There's more of this. There's more of this. So let's go. Matter of fact, it being around Hanukkah time, let's go to let's go to first Maccabees, second Maccabees. Let's go to second Maccabees. Second Maccabees six and eighteen. And this is Eleazar, right? First Maccabees six and eighteen. So uh let's start there. Eleazar, one of the principal scribes, an aged man of well favored countenance was constrained to open his mouth to eat swine's flesh. So he was our elder. He was a he was an elder man. He was a he was a, he was a, a well respected man. You know what I mean? And they, they tied him down, they constrained him and tried to force him to meet to eat swine's flesh. And let's see how our elders dealt with that, right? But he choosing rather to die gloriously, but Salakia, but he choosing rather to die gloriously than to live stained. <laughs> He chose rather to live gloriously than to, he did rather to die gloriously, Salakia, than to live stained. All right. So what did he do? It, he, but choosing rather to die gloriously than to live stained with such an abomination, he spit it forth and he came to his own accord to the torment. So that means he walked up to the torture machine on his own like, hey, let's just get it over with. Let's just make this happen because I'm not finna live stained. I'm not finna give all my youngsters an example of a weak man who, who is not going to follow the laws of the most high God. We will sacrifice our life for the laws that were given to our forefathers by the most high God. You dig what I'm talking about? We will sacrifice our life for that. We would rather die gloriously. <clears throat> so lock you. Let's go. Uh, let me go to uh, Deuteronomy. Deuteronomy chapter uh, 20. It's one of my favorites. Deuteronomy chapter 20, right? And it shall be. Matter of fact, let's start at verse 1, man. Verse 1. When thou goest out to battle against the enemies and seest horses and chariots and a people more than thou, be not afraid of them. For the Lord thy God is with thee, which brought thee up out of the land of Egypt. And it shall be. When you are come nigh unto battle, that the priest shall approach and speak unto the people and shall say unto them, Hear, O Israel, ye approach this day unto battle against your enemies. Let not your hearts faint, fear not, and do not tremble, neither be terrified because of them. For the Lord your God is he that goeth with you to fight for you against your enemies, to save you. You dig? The Most High goes up ahead of you. He goes before you to fight your enemies. You dig? So you don't fear. Don't be faint-hearted. Don't tremble. You gotta, you gotta have faith. You gotta pray every day that the Most High God gives you the faith. That when that time comes for you to be tested, that you can't answer the call like David did. That you can answer the call like Judith did. When everybody else is shaking in their boots. You know what I'm talking about? You dig? So the Most High God is giving us instruction. You follow my commandments. That's where you get rid of fear. You show the love for God. You follow his commandments. And that's how you get rid of fear. And then when, when the time comes for you, to, for you to have a test, then hopefully the most high God gives you the strength that you need to, to, to get through it, to push through it, to fight through it. 
You dig what I'm talking about? That's warrior spirit. You know what I'm talking about? And we ain't playing on this. So on the real, the most high God, let's go. Let's let me let me let me kind of switch it up a little bit because I want to go show y'all. It ain't always about fighting. You know what I mean? It's about whatever odds you're facing. You know, when it says you outnumbered, that could be that could be physical men. It could be physical bodies that you gotta that you gotta fight. Or it could be, you know, the odds that you against, you dig, where you have to tap into that, to that, to that strength and courage for the most high to keep you right. So let's go to, uh, let's go to Jeremiah. Let's go to Jeremiah. Book of Jeremiah chapter one. All right. Book of Jeremiah chapter one. And this is the most high God came to Jeremiah and said, I'm calling you to be a prophet. Right. And Jeremiah was young. He was a youngster. You know what I mean? Jeremiah was a young boy. He was a young buck and uh, the most high God called him. And he was like, he said, he said, I'm young. You know, I, he said, oh, let me, let's just start there. Book of Jeremiah chapter one, verse six. Then said I, ah, Lord God, behold, I cannot speak for I am a child. But the Lord said unto me, say not that I am a child for thou shalt go all that uh, I shall, for thou shalt go to all that I send thee and whatsoever I command thee, thou shalt speak. Be not afraid of their faces, for I am with thee to deliver thee, saith the Lord. Then the Lord put forth his hand and touched my mouth. And the Lord said unto me, behold, I have put my words in your mouth. See, I have this day set thee over nations and over kingdoms to root out and to pull down and to destroy and to throw down to build and to plant. You see that? The Most High God said, don't be afraid of their faces. I'll give you the words to say. I'll give you the strength that you need, right? I have set you over nations and kingdoms. This is a little boy he's talking to, a youngster. He's saying, I set you over nations and kingdoms to root out and pull down and to destroy, to throw down, right? To build and to plant. So we gotta understand that if we follow in the Most High God's laws and commandments, he will do wondrous and great things for us. You dig what I'm talking about? And we got to keep that warrior spirit. We got to keep that, that in our heart and understand that if we are doing right by the Most High God to the best of our ability, then he's not going to leave us stained. He's not going to leave us stained, right? Matter of fact, let's end it off with some Judith. Let's end, end it off with some Judith because that's another one of my favorite books, right? Let's end it off with Judith because that's one of my favorite books also, man. All right, so let's go to Judith, uh, chapter 16. Let's do verse 3, right? For God breaketh the battles. For among the camps, in the midst of the people, he hath delivered me out of the hands of them that persecuted me. A sir came out of the mountains from the north. He came with ten thousands of his army. The multitude whereof stopped the torrents, and their horsemen have covered the hills. He bragged that he would burn up my borders and kill my young men with the sword and dash the suckling children against the ground and make mine infants as a prey and my virgins as spoil. But the almighty Lord has disappointed them by the hand of a woman, right? So that's that's right there. It's not even just for our men. This is a this is a mighty, mighty woman of Israel. And we all know what happened with Judith. You dig what I'm talking about? And she did some mighty things to save Israel in her time. You dig what I'm talking about? So let's finish it off with this. Verse 17. Woe to the nations that rise up against my kindred. The Lord Almighty will take vengeance of them in the day of judgment in putting fire and worms in their flesh and they shall feel them and weep forever. I want to give call hello to Yahweh by Shemi Shai. All praise to the Most High God. Double honors to all the elders of HOI all over the country putting in that work. Risking their life so that they can teach us this word. This brother Yahweh Sai, throw me a like and subscribe. Shalom.